We're counting down the 10 aircraft engines that defy the odds and outlast the rulebook. From battered trainers with thousands of hours beyond their expected limits to 1930s beasts that still fly bush pilots home, these mechanical legends earn their place not with speed or flash, but with sheer, unyielding reliability. This list spans the tough, low-compression classics, controversial technical upstarts, and behemoths that survive where others fail. Which engine truly refuses to die, and which bulletproof reputation is not what it seems? Let's break open the stats and start the countdown with number 10. The Lycoming O235 sits at the heart of nearly every flight school in North America. It is the engine that shrugs off the worst a student pilot can throw at it, full throttle climbs, abrupt power cuts, and landings that would make a mechanic wince. With a low 7 to 1 compression ratio, this engine does not chase horsepower. It is designed to outlast the abuse. Instructors have watched O235s run at redline for years, barely breaking a sweat. One Cessna 152 at Purdue University logged over 28,000 hours across multiple overhauls, and the current engine is still running strong at 3,200 hours since its last rebuild. Owners routinely report 2,800 hours between overhauls, far outpacing the official 2,000-hour TBO stamped in the manual. Valve wear shows up before any real damage, and compression checks at 70 to 80 are the norm even after years of service. The O235 never asks for much, just clean oil and the occasional spark plug. That is why it earns its place as the baseline for engines that simply refuse to die. The Rotax 912 is the engine that old-timers love to hate. It does not rumble like a like homing, and it does not care. Under the cowl, liquid-cooled cylinder heads keep combustion temperatures in check, preventing the kind of valve warping that ends so many air-cooled engines. This modern approach means the 912 shrugs off unleaded mogas and does not flinch at high engine speeds, spinning happily at 5,800 revolutions per minute while delivering just enough torque to pull a Kit Fox or a Flight Design CT through the sky. Operators log 2,300 hours or more before major work, outpacing its official 2,000-hour time between overhaul or TBO. The secret is not brute force, it is the culture of regular gearbox inspections and coolant flushes. Gearbox issues, when they show up, are rare. Service records show less than 1 per 100,000 hours. Mechanics who pull down Rotax gearboxes after 2,000 hours often find nothing but a thin smear of sludge on the magnetic plug. The numbers do not lie. It is not pretty, and it is not traditional, but the Rotax 912 keeps flying when others are headed for the shop. That is why, even with a tighter maintenance schedule, it earns a spot on this list. The Lycoming IO540 is a slab of metal that seems to ignore the calendar. Mechanics call it a block of granite, and for good reason. Under the skin, this engine is a 350 horsepower beast that spends its life loafing at 235 or 260 horsepower thanks to derated operation. That means cylinder pressures run about 35% lower than the engine design limits, and the metal inside hardly notices the hours ticking by. FAA records show that in 2012, the official time between overhaul, TBO, for many IO540s jumped from 2,000 hours to 2,400 hours, but out in the field, owners routinely push past 3,000 hours between major overhauls when they stick to conservative power settings. Teardowns of high-time engines tell the story, cam lobes still sharp, bearings showing only a polished sheen, and compression numbers that would make a new engine jealous. The IO540 doesn't just survive, it thrives when treated with respect, shrugging off the kind of wear that would send lesser engines to the scrap pile. This is the heavy metal solution, big displacement, low stress, and a reputation built on outlasting the airframe. Precision keeps the Continental IO550 alive long after rivals have surrendered to heat and fatigue. This engine is not just displacement and brute strength, it is a study in fine balance. At the heart of the IO550 is a perfectly weighted crankshaft that glides through each revolution, minimizing vibration and spreading stress evenly across all six cylinders. But the real trick lies in how it breathes. Gammy injectors, custom-tuned for each cylinder, 
keep the exhaust gas temperature spread within a 50 degree window. That means every cylinder gets just the right amount of fuel, eliminating the hot spots that cook valves and warp heads. Pilots who know their way around an engine run the IO550 lean of peak, trimming fuel flow until cylinder head temperatures drop by as much as 100 degrees. The result is an engine that sips fuel, runs cool, and shrugs off the hours. Oil analysis from high-time IO 5050s tells the same story. Iron and nickel levels stay flat even as the tachometer climbs past 2,800 hours, well beyond the factory's 2,000-hour recommendation. The IO 550 does not forgive sloppy technique, but in the hands of a careful pilot, it redefines what is possible for piston engine life. Owner logs show these engines reaching 3,000 hours on the original bottom end, provided the tuning is meticulous and the fuel is measured to the drop. This is reliability by design, not by accident, a mechanical symphony where every part plays its role in perfect time. The Continental IO 470 does not win beauty contests, but it is the engine overhaul shop's trust to finish the job. This is the bottom end legend, a crankshaft so stout that teardown crews call it the last thing to wear out. In the Cessna 182 fleet, these engines have been running since Eisenhower was in office, logging hour after hour in the hands of working pilots and weekend flyers alike. The real secret sits deep in the crankcase, forged steel, generous bearing surfaces, and a design that shrugs off the kind of abuse that would snap lesser cranks in half. NTSB records back up the reputation, Crankshaft failures show up in less than 1% of IO-470 service difficulty reports, a rate most mechanics would call impossible in any other six-cylinder. Owners do not baby these engines. Oil leaks are considered a badge of honor, not a sign of trouble. It is not unusual to see 2,700 hours on the Tatch before the first major teardown, hundreds past the factory's 2,000-hour time between overhaul the TBO. When the overhaul finally comes, the crank and case often pass inspection with nothing more than a polish. The IO 470 is not about fancy tuning or squeezing every last horsepower from the block. It is about brute strength, mile after mile. Even as parts get harder to find, the ones already flying refuse to quit. For mechanics, it is the workhorse you would pick if your paycheck depended on making it home every time. The Pratt & Whitney R985 Wasp Jr. doesn't just power airplanes, it baptizes them in OIL. Designed in 1938, this nine-cylinder radial was built for a world where airports were muddy strips and runways were suggestions. Mechanics call it the last honest engine, no sensors, no computers, just a ring of steel jugs flinging 20 quarts of oil in every direction. The R985 secret is not precision, it is redundancy. Lose a cylinder to a stuck valve or a cracked head, and the engine keeps firing on the other eight, dragging bush planes and beach 18s home when every other system has quit. That oil is not just a mess, it is protection, cooling the cylinders and washing away the grit of rough landings and river crossings. In 2015, a beaver in the Canadian bush landed safely after a valve failed mid-flight. Post-flight inspection showed it had finished the trip on seven healthy cylinders and the pilot walked away without a scratch. Commercial operators in Alaska and northern Canada routinely log over 5,000 hours on these engines before a full overhaul. The Wasp Jr.'s heavy maintenance demands are a fair trade for its unkillable spirit. It is not elegant, but it is the reason freight, mail, and passengers still reach the most remote corners of the continent. In a world that worships digital perfection, the R985 is a greasy monument to survival by brute force. The Franklin 6 series is the engine most pilots forget, but mechanics remember for one reason. It runs smooth, smoother than any piston engine in its class. While most aircraft engines shake and rattle through life, the Franklin's opposed cylinder layout cancels out vibration almost completely. That balance is not just comfort for pilots, it is a lifesaver for the machines themselves. When Bell needed an engine for the Model 47 helicopter, they picked the Franklin because it would not shake the airframe apart. Helicopters are brutal on engines, running at steady low revolutions per minute for hours 
with every tremor multiplied by the long, flexing tail boom. Yet Franklin-powered Bell 47 helicopters routinely logged 2,500 hours or more between overhauls well past the 1,800-hour time, between overhaul listed in the book. Operators found that the smoother the engine, the less metal fatigue crept into the mounts, the less wear showed up on the crank, and the longer the whole machine lasted. Vibration studies from the 1960s proved what pilots already knew. The Franklin's geometry let it live a gentle life, even in the rough world of rotorcraft. It did not leak oil like a radial engine, and it did not need derating like the big sixes. It simply hummed along, year after year, quietly racking up hours that would send most engines to the scrap heap. In the world of Forgotten Heroes, the Franklin 6 series stands out, not for brute strength or flashy horsepower, but for the quiet confidence that comes from perfect balance. The Garrett TPE331 doesn't ask for respect, it demands it. This is the engine that keeps working long after its airframe has scared away every cautious pilot in town. Fixed shaft turbines like the TPE331 deliver power the moment you push the throttle. There is no waiting for the turbine to spool up. Mechanics trust it because, unlike free turbine rivals, there is no clutch or freewheeling gear to fail. The connection from the power section to the propeller is direct, simple, and nearly impossible to break under normal operation. In the 1970s, Mitsubishi bolted TPE 331s onto the MU-2, a plane with a reputation for biting the unwary. The airplane earned a stigma, but the engine never did. NTSB records from the 1990s show that engine-related failures in the MU-2 fleet accounted for less than 10% of major incidents. Most were pilot error or airframe issues. Mechanics who have torn down high-time TPE 331s often find the hot section, the turbine's heart, still within spec after 5,000 hours or more. That's twice the interval many rivals can claim, and some commercial operators stretch it even further with careful monitoring. Foreign object damage is always the enemy of turbines, but the TPE 331's robust compressor and direct drive mean that when debris gets sucked in, it chews up the propeller first. The engine itself just keeps spinning. The gearbox is simple and overbuilt, designed to shrug off abuse and keep the propeller turning. It is not the most famous turbine, but it is the one mechanics would bet their license on. In a world where complexity is often the enemy of reliability, the TPE 331's brute simplicity and instant torque have earned it a top three spot on any list of unkillable engines. The Pratt & Whitney PT6 doesn't just set the standard for turbine reliability, it rewrites the rulebook. While most engines on this list are built to survive neglect and rough hands, the PT6 achieves something close to mechanical immortality through pure engineering genius. Its secret lies in the reverse flow design. Instead of gulping air straight through from front to back, the PT6 draws air in at the rear, compresses it, and then folds the flow forward through the hot section. This layout shields the compressor blades from rocks, ice, and debris. Foreign object damage that would cripple a conventional turbine often never reaches the heart of a PT-6. Out in the field, that means fewer surprises and more engines making it to their next overhaul. Operators routinely see hot sections lasting 10,000 hours or more before major work, a number that dwarfs the service lives of most piston engines. But the real headline comes from the shutdown rate. According to Pratt & Whitney Canada, the PT-6 averages just one in-flight shutdown for every 300,000 hours flown. Some USAF fleet records put the number even higher. One shutdown per 400,000 hours in the T-6A Texan 2 trainers. For comparison, walking across the street carries more risk than flying behind a PT-6. This is why the PT-6 powers everything from King Airs to caravans, from the Arctic tundra to the African bush. It is not just trusted, it is revered. Mechanics speak of PT-6s that have outlived three airframes. Their logs stretch back to the 1970s. The engine's modular construction means a failed component can be swapped without pulling the whole power plant, and the hot section inspection intervals are measured in years, not months. If the piston crowd swears by simplicity, the PT-6 answers with a kind of elegant complexity that has proven itself over millions of flight hours.
The only thing keeping it from the top spot is cost, and the reality that for most pilots, the PT-6 is a dream reserved for turboprop budgets. But when it comes to reliability, nothing else comes close. The Lycoming 0360 does not just power airplanes, it powers entire communities of pilots, mechanics, and dreamers. With more than 50,000 units installed across Cessnas, Pipers, malls, and home builds, it is the engine you are most likely to find on any ramp, in any country, at any time. The O360 is not the smoothest or the fastest, but it is everywhere. That is not just a matter of production numbers, it is a matter of survival. When an engine is this common, parts are never far away. Need a piston? $200 and you are back in the air. A magneto goes bad in the backcountry? There is a spare in the next hangar, or a mechanic who has rebuilt a dozen from memory. What sets the O360 apart is not just the supply chain, it is the way it shrugs off hardship. Owner logs and overhaul shops report engines making it to 3,500 hours on the original bottom end, far past the 2,000-hour TBO stamped in the manual. In the real world, that means flying season after season with nothing more than oil changes, compression tests, and the occasional cylinder swap. Mechanics call it the parallel valve advantage, a design that keeps things simple, keeps temperatures even, and lets each part do its job without drama. Stories from the field back up the reputation. In 2007, a bush pilot team in South America found themselves stranded after a forced landing. The O360 had a bent pushrod and a cracked rocker arm. With nothing but hand tools and a rock for a hammer, they fashioned a replacement, talked it down, and flew the plane out of the jungle. That is not luck, that is design. You can trust when the stakes are highest. Overhaul economics seal the deal. Parts are cheap, labor is familiar, and there is no shortage of shops that know every inch of the engine. The O360 is not immune to wear. Valves and rings eventually call it quits, but the bottom end just keeps going. That is why when you add up longevity, repair ease, parts supply, and cost, the O360 stands alone at the top of the scoreboard. It is the mechanical heartbeat that keeps general aviation alive, year after year, in every corner of the world. Across all 10 engines, one truth stands out. Simplicity and overbuilt design outlast complexity every time. Whether air-cooled piston or immortal turbine, true reliability is forged in metal that is never asked to do more than it must. That is why these engines keep pilots flying and keep the industry alive. In aviation, trust is measured in hours, and some machines just never stop earning it.